1963 Berlin The movie starts with Napoleon Solo, Henry Cavill, makes his way through the checkpoint, but notices he's being followed by a man we'll later discover is Ilya Kuryakin, Army Hammer. Solo goes to a chop shop where he meets Gaby Teller Alicia Vikander. Gaby's father is being forced to build an atom bomb for the Nazis. Solo's going to get her out of Berlin so they can find her uncle Rudy, Sylvester Groth, and have him set up a meeting between her and her dad. As they make their way to the border, they're chased by Kuryakin, who turns out to be Solo's equal match. However, Solo has help. Waiting on the other side of the wall is a CIA truck that shoots a zip line up to the roof, where Solo and Gaby end up. They're able to zip line over the wall. Kuryakin is right behind them, but the truck backs up making slack in the line, sticking Ilya on the other side of the wall. Flashback to Kuryakin's briefing on Solo. Solo came to Europe during the war, but stayed there and became a great criminal. He was eventually captured, but the CIA felt his skills were too good to be wasted in a prison, so they recruited him. CIA specialist Sanders, Jared Harris, meets with Solo at a park. In the restroom he lays out the mission, while at the urinal he says, what I'm going to feed you might be bitter, it's innuendo but nevertheless, it's true. It's Ilya Koryakin. They fight. Koryakin beats Solo in physical combat. The KGB director Oleg, Misha Kuznetsov comes in and tells Kory, don't kill your partner on your first day. Solo asks what that means. Sanders translates. Solo says he understands the words, but what does that mean? Solo and Corey are teaming up on this mission. They have to go to Rome where Corey will pose as Gaby's fiancé. Solo will be there posing as an antiquities dealer. They believe a family business there that Gaby's uncle Rudy works for is a front. The business has been in Alexander's, Luca Calvani, family, but it's actually his wife Victoria, Elizabeth Debicki, who's the brains behind the operation. Corey and Solo get to know each other by revealing what they've discovered in each other's files. Solo triggers Corey's rage issues, but the Russian manages to keep them in check. A keen eye will notice that Hugh Grant, who we later find out is a character named Waverly, checks into the hotel in Rome right before Napoleon does. Ian does. When Napoleon checks in, he notices a couple of guys who are clearly evil henchmen in the lobby. He has his bags brought to his room, but he takes off. On the streets of Rome, Corey and Gaby bond a little. Solo shows up and tells Corey that he's going to get mugged, just so that the bad guys are sure that he's really a Russian architect, as per his cover, and not a super baddest secret agent. Per baddest secret agent. His instructions are to be a pussy and just get mugged. Don't fight back. The mugging happens and even though they take Corey's father's watch, he manages to suppress his rage and not fight back. They even take Gaby's engagement ring. Solo pops up and they all go back to the hotel. Solo and the hotel desk clerk pop open some champagne and have some sexy time. Meanwhile, in the engaged couple room, Gaby chugs vodka and tries to get Corey to dance with her. He won't. So she slaps him and they start wrestling. She passes out and he tucks her into bed. In the morning, Solo discovers about a dozen monitoring bugs in his room. He goes to Corey's room and hands them to him telling him that they're Russian made. Corey hands Solo about a dozen bugs too and says that they're American made. Corey picks Gaby up at the front of the hotel and gives her a brand new engagement ring. Victoria is throwing. On the way in, he literally bumps into Waverly. We later find out that he picks his pocket and steals his invitation. Solo crashes the party, party, invitation. Solo crashes the party, gets in a fight with security because he doesn't present an invitation. Victoria takes notice, and Solo shows his invitation. He manages to lift her necklace and another woman's bracelet. Victoria asks how he got an invitation and who he is. He says his name is Devaney, and he's a man who specializes in filling in the gaps in people's collections. He gives her the bracelet and the necklace. Gaby and Corey are all also at the party. Rudy disses Corey by wondering if Gaby is slumming it with a workhorse. Corey goes into the bathroom and well he can't keep his rage in check anymore and ends up roughing up three rude dudes. Alexander takes a keen liking to Gaby right away. Back at the hotel, Corey has locked himself in the bathroom. It turns out he turned it into a dark room and is developing a film. Sure enough, his camera was able to pick up on radiation on clothing at the party. Yep, Gaby's dad must be close and working on that atom bomb. Both Solo and Corey say that they'll sleep on this new information. 
but they both break into the company's factory in the middle of the night. While Corey is clearly the muscle between the two of them, Solo is more cunning and effortlessly breaks into a large safe. It's empty besides a centrifuge used in making bombs. What Solo didn't count on was an alarm on the safe. They escape by jumping out a window and onto a boat. Solo falls off, swims to a dock where he finds a truck that has someone's dinner. He casually dines while Corey gets chased in circles by bad guys on a boat of their own. They blow up Corey's boat. Solo drives away, but thinks better. He goes back and crashes his truck onto the bad guy's boat, and then rescues a drowning Corey. Victoria sees that the safe has been opened and calls Solo's hotel room. He's not answering. Rudy calls Gaby and asks to apologize to Corey but she says he's asleep. She then calls room 304 to tell the person on the other end that the meeting is confirmed. Huh, Victoria and her goons race to the hotel, but Solo and Corey get there first. She and Solo get it on in his room, 807. The next morning, Corey awkwardly turns on a tracker that's on Gaby's garter belt. Lots of sexual tension there. Gaby meets with her uncle and says that she knows her father is there and that he works for him. Rudy asks how she knows. We haven't heard her answer just yet. Instead, we see Corey, who's monitoring from afar, start running. Solo meets with Victoria. He pours himself a drink, but she's drugged it. He wakes up strapped to a torture chair. Rudy is an evil Nazi scientist who keeps a scrapbook of all the horrific stuff he's done. He has a blank page just waiting for Solo. Unfortunately, there's a short in the electric chair that Solo's in. Corey pops in and rescues Solo and straps Rudy in the chair. He tells them that the warhead is already built. Corey and Solo step out of the room to debate what to do with Rudy. In the background, the short in the electric chair fixes itself, and Rudy gets electrocuted to the point of bursting in flames. Gaby is brought to an island where his dad is working. She slaps him and tells him to finish the job. Alexander and Victoria seem happy with this. Meanwhile, Waverly turns out to be a member of the British intelligence, Phil Solo and Corey in on what's going on. The Brits knew that it was only a matter of time before someone grabbed Gaby to try to get her dad to finish the atom bomb. They assumed it would be the Nazis who grabbed her. They were surprised that it was the Russians and the Americans, so Gaby has been working undercover with the British this whole time. She gains the trust of the bad guys by telling them that Corey and Solo are secret agents. That's the conversation we weren't privy to earlier. She knew that her new engagement ring would have a bug in it, a bug in it and that Corey would be listening. Solo says that what he thinks happened was that really the British were working with her, but now that they've lost her, Corey and Solo are both told by their respective superiors to get the warhead, the disc with all of Professor Teller's research, and kill the other if necessary. On the island, and kill the other if necessary. On the island, Gaby and her dad try to switch lenses on the warhead, but Victoria sees. There's a second warhead there too. She orders Gaby be put in a cell and tells her father to finish or she's dead. He finishes and Victoria takes his disc, the backup he's hidden and shoots him in the head. Time for a super stylized and ultra cool breaking and montage as Solo and Corey storm the island. During it, Napoleon finds Corey's dad's watch on a guard and grabs it. They find Gaby in the warhead on the far side of the island in a jeep being driven by Alexander. Solo chases in a dune buggy. While Corey is on a motorcycle, the vehicles all crash. Alexander and Corey fight and Corey stabs him in the head with his knife. Turns out though, this is the wrong bomb. Victoria disappeared with the right one. Napoleon remembers that Alexander's family used a fishing boat to smuggle gold for the Nazis. He's able to remember the name of the boat from an old childhood photo of Alexander. They radio the boat and Solo taunts Victoria about the way her husband died. They stay on the radio long enough for the good guys to track the boat. Turns out that the two lenses that were in the bombs make it so that one bomb can take out the other. They launch the decoy bomb and blow up Victoria, the atom bomb and the fishing boat. Gaby apologizes to Corey and returns the engagement ring. He tells her to keep it so that he can know if she ever needs him. Corey's boss tells him that the professor's disc wasn't destroyed. Solo has it. Corey goes to his room. Solo pours drinks for the two of them. Corey sees the disc and is filled with rage. Solo gives him his dad's watch and shows him the disc. They both decide to destroy it. Waverly and Gaby show up. Waverly says that he's decided to keep the group together for a while and that they have a new code name. Uncle. United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Over the end credits we see everyone's dossiers. One little detail I noticed 